Meyer Lansky's life reflected the entire history of organized crime in America. He came to New York from Russia with his parents when he was nine years old. He grew up in poverty with the men who would later become the godfathers of the mob. Because he was a Jew, he could never become a member of that inner circle of the mob, the Italian Mafia. Yet he was more powerful than any of them, and he had more influence in shaping the mob's destiny than any other single individual. He was always small for his age, and he learned to survive by his wits. He was good with numbers, and after he had proven himself during Prohibition, the mob tapped him as its consultant. It was Lansky's job to develop casino gambling. The mob provided the muscle and the original money. Lansky provided the brains, and casinos sprouted in Havana, in South Florida, Las Vegas, the Bahamas. His power was challenged frequently. Bugsy Siegel, Lansky's partner during Prohibition, built the first Las Vegas casino hotel and then tried to run it as his own. Two bullets in his face brought management back under Lansky's control. In 1957, Albert Anastasia, the most feared man in the New York Mafia, tried to move Lansky out of Havana casino gambling. Instead, Anastasia was shot out of his barber's chair in a New York hotel. Lansky's power was secure. Through the 1960s, Lansky directed, from Miami, the skimming of cash from Las Vegas counting houses. Indicted for skimming $14 million in 1971, he fled to Israel. Eventually, law enforcement heat was so great, Israel deported him. No other country would take him, and he returned to face trial for contempt of court and income tax evasion. With good lawyers and poor health, he managed to never spend a day in jail. He was found not guilty of tax evasion, and the other charges were dropped. After open-heart surgery, he went into semi-retirement. But he was still the senior member of the board, the man the mob came to for advice. By the time he died, he may have been worth a billion dollars. But he was so good at hiding and manipulating money, most of his personal fortune will never be found. He was a survivor who outlived his contemporaries because he was smarter and more cunning, because he understood human nature and knew how to exploit it. In his circles, he was known as a man of his word. A deal was a deal, and he never talked. With him, the mob felt its secrets and its investments were safe. I'm Clarence Jones, Channel 10 Eyewitness News.